Yeah, I was doing it right. Okay. I don't know why I just thought I was not doing it right. We're going to use Play Doh. We have a spinning rib nut. Now we are unsure how we are going to get that out. Maybe add a recessed shelf right here. Okay. What is up guys? Back to another van build video. Um, today we're going to be knocking out the wall framing. We'll also be priming all of our wood to make it more resistant to mold and moisture so pretty straightforward weekend for us uh -oh. it's usually how you think it's gonna go and then <laughs> but i have a pretty um pretty confident about our game plan for this weekend so let's get into it so just a brief overview of how we're going to get our furring strips mounted to the wall we're gonna try and use as many of these uh, stock ProMaster holes with our, our rib nuts, and I'll show you how we get these mounted later, but they'll just slide right in here. Use a tool that crimps the back, and um, we'll drill through the wood, mount our bolt into there, and that's how these are gonna stay up. With our furring strips that we decided to use, we we're originally gonna go with some thinner furring strips, like one by threes or one by fours, to run horizontally, but we noticed that if we had some one inch thick ones, then we'd run into an issue with this long pillar right here. It, this will stick out further than the wood. So what we decided to opt for is to do something a little thicker, like a, a two by rather than a one by. So that way when we run these horizontal, they will also stick out further than this for when we run our shiplap board for our wall panel. We're gonna butt up some of these one by threes for the vertical furring strips and puzzle piece it all together. This is that rivet setter tool I was talking about to mount these rib nuts. Everywhere where we have mountable furring strips for framing support for the cabinets, upper and lower. I just want these to be everywhere pretty much. So you wanna just twist your rib nut onto the end while it's open, insert it into the hole, clamp down, and then you want to tighten a little bit on this, clamp down again. You want to do this two or three times. Then you'll twist this all the way out. And boom. Now we have a mounting point for one of our furring strips. And then we will mount these about every foot and a half or so down along this. So that way we know our studs are um, structurally sound. We are going to measure out the fern strips and get them cut for the wall framing. That way we can prime them afterwards and then mount them to the wall. Ricky is going back to the store for more screws and I am going to start priming our burn strips. I got these pro grade paint brushes off of Amazon and we got Kills primer. We heard it's really good stuff so we're going to be using that for our primer. Made a mistake earlier. I know we have all these M8 pre-drilled pre holes from the manufacturer back here, and for some reason I thought they were everywhere in the van, and they're pretty much only from the back half back. So every everywhere over here and on the ceiling where we're, we're gonna have our ceiling support, they are not M8 holes. So, luckily we do have other rib nut sizes, but I had to go to the store and pick up one of these step bits 
and I'm drilling through them and um, making them just a couple sizes bigger to fit these quarter inch rib nuts so we can mount the rest. It just looks like that and um, yeah, you just step to each new drill size. So we got all of the rib nuts mounted for our horizontal framing uh, and on the ceiling. The way we're gonna line up these rib nut holes with this board is a seemingly childish way. Uh, we're gonna use Play-Doh and put it on, stick it to the back of the board and then get everything lined up. And then well, we're gonna get the Play-Doh lined up with where these rib nut holes are. And then we're going to press down and it will leave an imprint of this hole on the Play-Doh and that's where we're gonna know where to drill our, um, uh, our holes through the wood. And I learned this trick from one of the guys I watch on YouTube, 70 Savage. So shout out to him, check out his videos. I've learned a lot from watching his stuff. But that's what we're about to do. Got the board placed up where the bolts were. We pressed the Play-Doh against them, or against the rib nuts that is. And you can see the marks of where all the rib nuts are. So now we know exactly where to drill our holes for our MA bolts. All right, so now we are using a paddle bit to counter sink, sink these bolts so the heads sit flush with the board, and then we will um, complete the drill. We have a spinning rib nut. So under here, the rib nut is no longer fastened to the metal and when we try to tighten the bolt, it also spins the rib nut. Now we are unsure how we are gonna get that out so we can retry this. All right, so day two, brief explanation of what we had happen here. So we got all our rib nuts mounted, we got our drills hold through the wood to fit. We made a purchasing mistake. This bolt, we bought a few of them. Luckily we only installed one, but this bolt has the wrong thread count. So it got stuck in the rib nut, didn't go all the way in, and the rib nut is now spinning. So this is stuck here. So we went to Home Depot, bought a, a pair of vice grips, so I can put it behind this board, clamp onto the, the lip of that rib nut so it can stop spinning. So hopefully I can get this bolt out of here. So hopefully this works. Got a nice tight grip onto that that rib nut. Oh, got it. <laughs> awesome. Woo. Oh my gosh. So, so we just locked onto the edge of the, the rib nut, luckily we could get it back there. Screw this bolt. All right. Now we're gonna have to probably drill another hole because this rib nut threading in there is probably all jacked up. But at least we got the board off and it's not just stuck on the wall. We got all of our roof uh, crossbeam furring strips cut out and I've been working on getting the um, bolt holes lined up with the rib nut mounts we have. And it seems like they're all good to go and I think they're ready to be countersunk. Okay, so we got a few of our ceiling furring strips, uh, our support beams in. Got quarter inch rib nuts with bolts, um, countersunk the, the sheets. These are technically like one by threes. They're not a true inch, but one by threes for across the ceiling. We got them on every other beam. I'm about to put this last one up. And I also have some lock washers on here as well. Just give it 
little bit extra holding power for you know vibrations later down the road. Started everything. All right. Now all of the ceiling cross furring strips are in. We're jumping in weekend number two of this video. This weekend we are putting up the vertical furring strips and we actually forgot the floor horizontal strips. So Ricky started putting up our vertical furring strips and as you can see, there's a lot of room behind here. So we thought that maybe similar to our bed frame, we could maybe add a recessed shelf right here behind our what would be our sofa. We haven't decided if that'll be plausible yet. If not, we're definitely gonna add some extra insulation in here if we can get that really nice and insulated. Over here is our vanity side. We were thinking about possibly putting a shelf in here as well. We don't know yet. Uh, to kind of figure out where everything would be in terms of recessed shelving, we did tape down the floor so we have marked off where our vanity will be, our sofa, and then our kitchen on the other side as well, as well as our bed. Last week, obviously we got up all of our other horizontal support beams, studs, whatever you want to call them. And we, were, we realized that we never did the floor. So we, all, we put a few more uh, rib nuts in here. And one weird thing about the floor is it isn't the same depth as this. So we're going to end up using a thinner furring strip, I think. I already cut these to length. Um, we're going to put these right here. And then this is actually a little too long. And then we're going to screw these onto the front. And this is going to be tucked up underneath here. And then it'll give it the most level vertical beam right here as we could, we could find. There might be better ways to do it, but I think it'll work just fine. We got most of our wall frame strips done. We did start our headboard recession, which we'll show you in the next video when we do the other side of the bed. Just to wrap up the, the wall frame strips, the vertical ones, we have them all pocket jigged in. Um, as you can see, we have a few more. Uh, we have to finish up this floorboard area down here. Um, and again, we possibly might put a couple more vertical beams in here. Not sure if we're going to do some sort of recessed shelving yet, but either vertical furring strips or recessed shelving here. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, we will show you how we did the recession for our bed frame. And we don't know what else we're doing, so we'll let you know that. We will see you guys in two weeks. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. Okay.